Hello, my name is Anthony Parenti, and I am the director of the Master's Plus and Certificate of Advanced Studies program here at Loyola University. This video is being provided to give some background and information regarding the State of Maryland requirements for LCPCs and LGPCs. To become an LCPC, our program is designed specifically to enable people to achieve that credential. The definition of a licensed clinical professional counselor is to be able to provide mental health services to groups and individuals along the areas of the prevention, treatment, and amelioration of mental health problems and issues. LCPCs are employed in a variety of different settings. Schools, mental health clinics, substance abuse treatment centers, employee assistance programs, college and university counseling centers, as well as elder care centers for, uh, that provide treatment, different group practices, and private practice as well among other types of settings, but any setting that provides mental health services, an LCPC would be qualified to provide these types of treatment prevention services. What's required to become an LCPC is a master's degree or a doctoral degree in a professional counseling field from an accredited education institution. For a master's holder, you need at least 60 graduate credits. For a PhD person, you would need at least 90 credits. Within those credits, an individual must take courses in 14 different content areas. And you take one course at least in each of those 14 content areas, except for the uh, field experience, which you would need two semesters of field experience during your master's training. So the 60 credits in the 14 content areas those content areas are listed at the State Board's website. We also have them on our Loyola Masters Plus website as well. Loyola has each of the courses that you would need to become an LCPC or an LGPC. That's what the Masters Plus program is designed for. Let me explain to you for a second the difference between an LGPC and an LCPC. An LGPC is someone who has taken all the coursework and sits for the NCE, which is the National Counselor Exam. Once you achieve all of the course content work and the 60 credits at the master's level, you are uh, enab you're able to take that exam. Once you pass the exam, you become an LGPC, which is a licensed graduate professional counselor. As a licensed graduate professional counselor, you are able to work under the supervision of a mental health professional, a licensed mental health professional. While you accumulate the remaining hours that are needed under the supervision of someone, Part of the requirements are that you receive 3,000 hours of supervised clinical counseling field experience. How that works is that you would accumulate some of the hours as you're obtaining your graduate credits. Whatever is uh, short of 1,000 hours, that is added to the 2,000 hours post-60 credits, post-master's degree, I should say that will enable you to 
uh, get the remaining hours. So for instance, uh, an individual usually gets 150 hours per semester uh, for supervised field experience, so two semesters, 300 hours. The remaining 700, unless you continue to take more uh, field experience coursework, uh, the remaining hours would be added to the 2,000 uh, that you are required to get. While getting those hours, 100 hours of supervised one-on-one uh, -on -one or group uh, supervision needs to take place. The board allows for half of those 100 hours to be uh, received in a group su supervision situation, and the other half, at least 50 uh, hours, needs to be one-on-one -on -one clinical supervision. So it's a limited license as a licensed graduate professional counselor. You're not able to yet work independently, um, which is the case for most mental health uh, practitioners anyway. And then you accumulate those remaining supervision hours. There is a new regulation uh, that went into effect in June that of 2012 that states that in your supervision, half of your clinical supervision uh, has to take place with another LCPC, um, and then the other half can be from any licensed mental health professional, psychologist, psychiatrist, or licensed clinical social worker. Uh, of course, all of your hours can be done with an L. CPC doing the supervision. What happens once you uh, get the LC or the LGPC is that you apply to the board showing them your transcripts, uh, having them decipher that you actually met all of the requirements and there is a monthly exam given, there's a date for each month and they will register you for that particular exam at that time. Also, they will send you information telling you about the uh, state licensure part of the exam. There's information they will send you about the legislation that covers LGPCs and LCPCs. Um, and there'll be some ethics questions as well, and you will take a, a multiple choice test that will show that you have knowledge uh, in that area as well. You only take the test, each of those tests once, and once you get the LGPC, once you've acquired all of the supervised hours, and 2,000 hours is typically two years worth of uh, clinical work after uh, getting your 60 credits, um, once you show the board and there's a form that you can print and uh, get your supervisor to sign and uh, you would sign as well, it needs to be notarized, you send that into the board and then you will be granted your LCPC, obviously as long as you've met all of the requirements. You only take the test to become an LGPC. Now if it winds up being more than two years because it's a two year license, you would have to get your license, even as an LGPC, renewed. During that period of time, you need to be taking some um, continuing education credits because you need 20 credits per year in order to continue to renew your license, which is the same uh, case for LCPCs as well. I also would like to make mention of the fact that if you are thinking about relocating to another state, it's a good idea to become familiar with the requirements of that particular state. Each state has different set of requirements, but they are very much overlapping and often quite similar. If you decide to relocate to another state, what will typically happen is that it won't limit you from being able to be licensed there, but the process could just take a little bit longer because they will ask to review all of your supervised clinical experience hours as well as uh, your uh, master's degree and making sure that you meet whatever course content requirements they have in that state. 
what often happens is that they will ask you to take maybe another course or do some additional uh, experience time under the supervision of somebody licensed, those kinds of things. Um, so wanting to move to another state, planning on relocating, returning back home, if that's the case, would not uh, you know, be penalized necessarily. It, you would be able to still find a way to become licensed in another state, even with getting all of your courses uh, done in the state of Maryland, for instance. Okay. There is a very useful website, uh, which is the State Board of Professional Counselors and Therapists. Um, and it has uh, a number of different forms there that you would need to download. It has the content areas. It has other information that's useful uh, for you as well. Okay. Other contact information is there also. To uh, contact me if you have any further questions, uh, again, that's Anthony Parenti. Uh, I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor with a master's in clinical psychology from here at Loyola. And my phone number is 410-617-5384. My email a address is aparente at loyola.edu. Parenti at loyola.edu. Our website has other important information that's related to this, and please contact me for further information or any questions that you might have that I could be of assistance with. Thank you very much.